My life, my insights, my podcast. This is D Span. Let's get it. back to another edition of this is d-span the podcast we got a new segment uh for 2019 here we're gonna do this once a month uh we got mitch on the line uh the segment is called span tank uh he's got some unbelievable ideas mitch what's up today buddy not much i got done with work just a little while ago i just cracked open a steel reserve spike watermelon i'm ready to go over this with you (laughs) all right so just this uh so this is gonna be like shark tank uh so when this pod takes off, um, we start making millions. Uh, we're gonna invest in some of these that Mitch's ideas. Uh, so then we're both gonna be rich, right? Yeah. Quick, <laughs> question, quick question to start this: Do we have any way to protect my ideas that I'm giving up? Because some of these are just gems. Yeah, we'll have to get these uh, once we post this on social media. We'll make sure that we get these trademarked uh, somehow. Right. So <laughs> you, you'll be you'll be protected. Um, yeah, this is unbelievable. When uh, Mitch sent me the list, uh, he's got five of them here, and I was blown away by his ideas. Now, Mitch is still in college, but obviously we got a genius on our hands. Uh, he's also a Cleveland Browns fan, which another NFL genius, what they're doing. So it kind of goes hand in hand, right? Yeah, I'm about to make the Odell Beckham trade of products. <laughs> so Mitch is entering the span tank here. Um why don't you go ahead and, and we'll start right away with your first one. What do you got for me? All right. My first idea is, uh, well, let me explain first before I get to it. Sure. I was, driving around, I was driving down the road one day and they had a sign up that said, adopt a highway. And uh, naturally my mind went to uh, highway adoptions. And I, 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 I thought about that for a while and I was like, why don't they put orphanages right along the highway? No one adopts any kids anymore, you know? Like, there, there's there's no... They're always complaining about having too many kids in those places. It's because they hide the orphanages away from everyone. If you put it right along the highway, we'd have more adoptions. We'd have less people having to have kids of themselves, and it would really solve the overpopulation problem. <laughs> well, first of all, very valid point. I don't think they're called... Are they called orphanages anymore in America, or is that just in Europe or Russia? I don't... Honestly, I, that's a true, honest question. Is I don't think there is an actual orphanage. I, I, I like, what do they call? There's got to be some kind of. Fo- is it just fostering kids now, or what? I don't get it. Well, mine would be called Crazy Mitch's uh, Kid Emporium. <laughs> no, is there gonna be bad? Like, so if it's off the highway, are you thinking like, like a truck stop type thing where it's right off an exit? You can go grab, pick up a kid. Yes, exactly. I've got a commercial all worked out too. <laughs> I'm Crazy Mitch, and this is Crazy Mitch's Kid Emporium. Come stop by and get a kid for cheap. We're right off of Exit 22. <laughs> stop by today. So basically is what your kind of thought is, ma- making the orphanages like, visible and yep. and less pa- like paperwork orphan- and less stuff like that, or what? Yeah, orphanages are just really bad at marketing themselves, I believe. I, I agree. I, have, I, I, I wouldn't even know where to go if you needed to adopt a kid. Like where do you, where do you first start? I think you start by watching a special on Oprah about kid adoption, and then you move on from there. Yeah, but, probably right. And then you go to whatever website she suggests. I don't know. Everything seems pretty shady. I don't know if I would trust anything. <laughs> it's a long pro. It's a very long process. I know. What so. I do trust is radio commercials, because I don't believe you can lie during. Well, just ask one uh, one eight hundred. Was it ninety nine ride dot com? Right. Ninety nine ride dot. I want I want to get the general in on this <laughs> as well. Yeah, I don't I don't have too much to say about this. I was this was probably my least favorite idea of yours. Just to say what you, it. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's it's by the way, it's located on a busy highway, not one of those not busy highways. So, just making that clear, people are gonna see this place. 
the pot. I, I agree. I agree that there needs to be more advertisement for like adoption and and you know I get that because I think you're right. That's th- that's very less advertised. But I off the side of the highway seems a little chintzy. But no, I think that the problem with these orphanages is they're treating these kids like they're brand new cars. These are used vehicles. <laughs> we need to treat it like a used car salesman at, at a used car sales place. Well, I mean, that's why you're on short, on span take here. Uh, <laughs> I, I have nothing else to say about that. Any any other info you want to get? We'll keep it for the end. I'll keep it. In, I'll keep it in mind after I hear the other ones. But is there any other last thoughts on the highway orphanage? No, I think we talk just about enough about <laughs> about that yeah i agree um, I've, got, I've, I've got another good idea now is this the one that you sent me or is this one you just thought of because i know that oh, you're drinking the spiked watermelon i know the juices start flowing and you get started having ideas no 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 this is this is on this is on my list this is this is my next idea yeah and i i really like this one so go ahead see you ever You've eaten that Kentucky Fried Chicken, correct? Correct, yes. I miss it. We don't have it in Oshkosh anymore. But you got the big bucket, and you get down to the bottom of the bucket, and the bucket is just filled with all the parts that fell off of the chicken, all the crispy parts. Correct. And and what you, you can't just throw that away. That's the tastiest part. So what I'm suggesting is screw the chicken, get a full bucket full of just the crispy part that falls off the chicken, call it Crispy Bits. (laughs) <laughs> call the restaurant crispy bits no yeah well, the restaurant or or oh because here's what here's here's what you're gonna run into because it either this crispy bits could be an item on kfc is that what you're thinking it, it could either or because if it's not kfc chicken it's not gonna taste the same yeah i know so you're gonna either have to you're gonna have to somehow trademark or you know intertwine with kfc if that's what you're thinking great idea first of all unbelievable could do so many things with with this you could you know you could order just the crispy bits in the bucket you could use the mashed potato bowls that they have there already and just sprinkle the bits on there I, you put them on salads <laughs> right crispy bits say i mean i mean you know everybody it's, wants a chicken caesar salad i mean you got great idea here keep going it is it is the best part of kentucky fried chicken i don't know why they haven't capitalized on this yet and I think after listening to this podcast, they might just uh, take this idea. Yeah, I'm definitely going to, uh, when we post uh, on social media, we're going to definitely tag KFC in this. Because this, <laughs> I'm not kidding, because this is a great idea. I saw it originally, and this was the first one that caught my eye. Just a, how did you think? Do you have KFC where you're at? Yeah, we have a KFC. And I, I came up with this idea while I was at KFC. I had a, I had a not a bucket, I had the three-piece meal, and I was eating the crispy bits. And the person across me was eating the bowl, and I just thought, what if the bowl was just filled with the crispy bits? I, it's like, it, my favorite part as a kid, you know, you'd heat up, I'd heat up the last piece of chicken, and there'd be all the crispy bits in the bowl, and I would dump them all onto the plate and make sure I had them with the meal. It's my favorite part. I, right. It's just, it's just a, it's a great idea. Uh, surprised nobody's came up with this before that we know I, of, right? I mean, I'm, we could do some, we don't research here, but we could research this. I mean crispy bits the title let's say let's say KFC or whatever that the, the title of the either the item or the actual restaurant fits Can't you imagine the colonel in a commercial come to KFC and get our crispy bits bowl yeah <laughs> it'd be it's absolutely perfect uh really liking this one uh and we are definitely going to take KFC in this one I think so I, I think we got a million dollar deal on the list right there. I agree. Uh, why don't you go on to number three here? All right, number three. This is the first of, because the last one, I, I guess the first one, these, these, these could all be businesses, but this is the first one that is clearly a service business. Um, it's called the Barber Shop. Emphasis on the bar. It is a bar and barber shop. What do you think, Dan? First of all, I love it. Uh, I love how he spelled it too in here. He spells it barber shop, but he capitalized the B A R to show that it's a bar, and then the lowercase bur shop. Perfect. A uh, few things I saw caught in mind. Great idea. Uh, I know some, uh, you know, men's haircut places can serve alcohol in bigger cities. I know it's, that. It's it's not, but but we're our emphasis is on the bar. 
and the the, the hair cutting is secondary. Okay, so you're it's more, of, it's more of a theme. It's more of a theme, less of an actual bar. Okay, okay, so you're okay, so it's a, so like a, a sports bar, but it's a yeah. Instead of bar, instead of bar stools, we got barbershop chairs. Okay, which is a good. I like that. Our signature drink is called the blue stuff you put the comb in. Oh, so you're saying you can't get a haircut at this spot? Oh no, you can. It's real shady and probably not that good, but yeah, because everybody's drinking. Yep, we but, do have one uh, one chair that you you go to for an actual haircut. Right, and this could be kind of fun too because you know when you're out all night, you know, on a bender, or, you know, all with your buddies, people tend to do stupid things when they're they're drunk. So then you could get a you know somebody could go get a wild haircut, still make profit off that, and then you're not liable the next day because you're in a bar. And it's not like it's a tattoo or anything. It's going to grow back. Right. So it's the perfect amount of crazy that drunk people will follow through with and do. I like it. Because you said you, you also kind of named the drink, right? The Like the, what's it called? The uh, What you put the combs in it, like desanitizes the combs, right? <laughs> yeah, that's our that's that's like the signature drink of the place. I mean, you could do a lot of things with this. A lot of different drinks. Uh, great idea. Another great <laughs> I mean, you're just rolling these ideas here. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. Anything else on those? Uh, no. We're, we're going to run into an idea right here that it's going, like, it might help if you've been smoking a little bit before you get to this next idea. This next... It, it's a doozy. All right. Go ahead with it. I call it the animal stocks. And I'm basically suggesting a complete shift on how we approach currency in the U.S., Okay. I'm, I am basically saying we put uh, values on animals and uh, start trading them like in the olden days. It's called animal stocks. You buy an animal for cheap, you make it better, and then you sell it. People are becoming way too attached to their animals, and it's high time that we start uh, putting them to monetary use. Okay. So um, let me see if I'm on, on the same page as you. So let's take a simple squirrel, for instance. There's a ton of squirrels around here. That'd be, what, a penny type thing? Is that kind of how we'd value that? And then we'd go up to, you know, a lion would be like a $100 bill? Or what? how are you How are you doing this? I'm saying you find a squirrel, and it's like a, let's say it's like a dollar, and you give it a nice haircut, and now it's $2, and you sell it to make profit. <laughs> we need specific animal trading posts. We need businesses to start accepting animals as uh, currency uh, and I think that it would be great. I mean I had a dream that I, I had I was buying birds and selling birds for more than I bought them for and then I used the profit to buy more birds I, this idea when did you think of this idea? I had a dream I said <laughs> was it after a night of drinking? It may have been I just know that it seems like a real good idea at the time. Yeah, I, I, it's out there. It's an out there idea, but that's how some ideas start. Um, I kind of like how you're valuing, you put the value into the, the animals. I kind of like that. I think that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I, mean, have, I don't have much else to say about this one. I mean, you know, you put money into a house so you can resell it at a higher value. Like, why not do the same thing with animals? Yeah, but we don't really know what any animal has value as of right now. I mean, what is it? I know. What is we the should. value of a squirrel right now? How could you? How could we start this? How do we? we there's got to be a starting point with value. You're right. We need to. Well, we have to uh, first off have people start <laughs> buying squirrels. <laughs> right. The lowest. The lowest type of animals got to be purchased now. Yeah. Like, yeah like okay. We have, we have values for like cats and dogs. Like that's yeah, easy. that's true. We do. That'd be easy to figure out. The problem is with these uh, pesky animals that you uh, that aren't house trained. These non domestic an- or these dom- I don't know what domestic means. Non domestic animals. No one owns them, so you can't buy or sell them. They're real expensive to hunt. I know that. <laughs> yeah, we. we I guess, yeah, I guess that's how we can kind of start valuing these things. Like, do we start valuing based off, you know, their meat? 
or you know that like what they or you know like obviously like when they kill those elephants the tusks are made of ivory i know that's illegal now but is that how we kind of start with the value of these animals i think it depends it, yeah i guess so it, it really depends what the market's like like yeah but there if, is no real mark we th- my point is we got to create a market for a lot of yeah. these things yeah <laughs> We can't just go sell stuff in a market that I mean we're just making up things then. That this is basically making up our own currency. That's kind of the, yeah, that's kind of what the point is. But you're using I'm, animals. I'm suggesting a complete shift in our country's currency, currency to animals. Well, if Trump stays in office four more years, maybe that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else from animal stocks? Oh, probably a lot more from animal stocks, but we can still move on. So. All right, so your final idea, uh, another interesting one, but why don't you go ahead and, and let us know. My final idea, and this one probably is the idea that speaks for itself the most, is just called denim socks. Basically, if socks made of denim. denim. Okay, uh... I'm surprised this hasn't been done. Actually, um, here's the issue. I'm coming in with this one. They're gonna be. Aren't, aren't they gonna be? Are you gonna have like tight, like tight skinny jean type denim so that it fits your foot better, right? Or because it can't really be a baggy. You can't have baggy jean yeah, socks. Yeah, right? yeah, it's gonna have to be like that. It's almost gonna have to be like a a fake denim, you know. And are we thinking making them like no show socks to crew net or to you know crew socks that are all the way up? So or like. Well, I guess what are you kind of thinking here? Why would you don't really see socks anyway? So what's the point? They gotta be long socks. They're gonna have the buttons on the side. They're gonna be stylish. They're the new style, Dan. Okay, and then when I first saw this, the first guy I thought of like who who would wear something like this, and I thought of Russell Westbrook. He always dresses really wild, right? Yep. So I think he'd be a guy, or LeBron. He wears goofy stuff. So I think. You know, once one of those guys, we get some pair of those on there, they could explode. We got a pair on him, we got a pair on Cam Newton, we're good. Right, Cam Newton, you know, Becca, all these guys wear crazy outfits. So this is, this that part of the idea I like, I just don't know if it's sustainable. <laughs> it's one of those things, like, you, I, I, I think it could go off for a while, and then it's just going to fade off. It's yeah, I think it might be too trendy, you know, to, and I don't know how long term. That's just on me, but I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? That's fair, but I mean, it's it's not always a bad idea to hit on a trend and get out when the, before it ends, you know? Correct. I, I totally agree with that. Make your money right away, just like the pet rock and trolls. No one's, yeah, no one, this, this is no one's idea. Once I make it, I, I would stop making it probably. Right. I, yeah, so I think when we if we, if we do decide to do this one, uh, I think it's – don't have a lot of inventory i think we uh yeah i think we put it in and try to sell as much you know have a very low inventory kind of like how big baller brand did yep and the lower the inventory it may even drive up the want for it even more because they know they can't have it man and this could be another one we could get lavar ball in on this because he, he this is right up his alley no inventory you buy a shoe you don't get it for set, what was it eight months yep big baller denim <laughs> yeah uh anything else on denim socks I mean, I just want to, the last thing I have to say about it is that I just, they're also a very good conversation starter, I would say. So if you're out at the bar and you're uh, you're struggling, you can just point down to your denim socks and I think they'll speak for themselves and uh, that's about all I have. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Usually if you're wearing something different, it's a little easier to uh, talk to people at a bar. That's right. All right, so we come to the end of Span Tank for this month, for March. Uh, your top one out of all these, what would you, what do you like? Well, since they're my ideas, I have a soft place in my heart for all of them. But am I going to pick from what I think is the best financially, or am I picking what I want the most? Well, why don't you go ahead and just do both, since this is the opening you know the first ever why don't you do both because i think i think the listeners want to know what you really what you think is going to make money and which one that you really wanted to succeed 
All right, we'll start out with what's going to make money, and what is going to make money is Crispy Bits. Crispy Bits is the best idea on this list. It's it's uh, other than the barber shop and the denim socks, it's the most realistic thing to be able to pull off. And people, I, I, there's already a market for it, I believe. So I think it'd be easy to slip in there. Now, what idea would I like to succeed? The Highway Orphanage. <laughs> easy underdog on this list, but it was the most fun idea I I had to come up with. Um, I, I've been sitting on this idea for about a month now, and I'd really like to hear the commercials, see the billboards on the side of the the highway, you know, and see the like the 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 flag signs in the in the ground pointing to like uh, a big sale on orphans. I just like I I would really like to see see it come to fruition. I could just tell by the way that you were talking about that first one that that was your baby. That is the one that you wanted. I could just tell, right? I just knew it. I knew you, I've known you for a few years, and I just knew that that was the one that you really deep down liked. I put a lot of thought into that one. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. First, I read it, and Crispy Bits I, could happen. Like, yeah. like you said, like it is a legit thing. Uh, the barber shop, I was off. I kind of liked the idea, but and then, but as you as you spoke more about it, I even liked it even more uh, about the actual just like oh, the bar actually looks like a barber shop. We'll sit in barber shop, you know, chairs. We'll sit. We have you know barber shop type drinks. Um, I like those two a lot. Um, I still I'm going with crispy bits for March. I just think all right. I just think that 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 we could that we could pull this off for one thing and and two, who doesn't like the crispy parts of KFC? I mean, is there any single person that does not like those? There isn't. I, I had some chicken today from some other place, and there was a crispy part that fell off. I tasted it. It wasn't any good. It's the crispy bits. For, it's specifically KFC. They have something here that they can make a lot of money off of, and they're not doing it. KFC, if you're listening, make crispy bits and write me a hundred thousand dollar check. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's a no it's a no brainer. They, they could come up with a whole another menu just off of that. Like we said, I mean, we named three four things in twenty minutes. Think what people that actually know what they're doing in the food industry could think of. Right, it's just like Taco Bell. If you ever notice Taco Bell, they come up with these new things, but it's the same. Yep. It's the same ingredients in all of them. It yeah, just it just looks different, like the Crunch Wrap. But now they got a certain burrito. Well, it's the same thing. It's yep. just not pressed. And Taco Bell and KFC are owned by the same place, so you'd think they would come to this realization. Correct, Yum Yum Brands. It's called. Yep. So yeah, you're right. Unbelievable first pod with us. Uh, I I think. I mean, do you have more ideas in the back of your head going here? Can you do this once a month at least, or maybe more? I've got a, I've got a list of at least a hundred <laughs> ideas in the bank, and I don't even think we're going to touch those ones. I can come up with new ideas on the spot. I'm an idea guy. That's who I am. Well, I think I think that's what we're going to do. I think once every four weeks, once a month, I think you come on, and uh, and we roll with this because at some point, this is my my pod's going to take off, and your ideas are going to hit. One of them's going to hit. If not more, so so let's keep riding this off. <laughs> let's keep going. All right, buddy. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, man. Mitch, appreciate you coming on. Uh, you're not running your podcast anymore, are you? Nope. We had a we, we hit a a lull, uh, and uh, hosts not being able to uh, host because of academics well that's all right we're glad to have you on ours and you can be a part of ours from now on you're you're, you're officially inscribed in the this is d-span podcast oh uh, i feel so special thank you, you so much you should all right man have a good night you too bye